Well, hello, everybody. Welcome to Makeover University. Um, what we're going to do in this module is we're going to talk about minimum property standards. So what that means is every lender has um, some standards in order to uh, fund the, the loan. So for example, FHA has what they call FHA minimum property standards, which are mostly health and safety issues. And what the lender wants is the home to pass those bare minimum standards. So, you know, no trip hazards, no asbestos, no mold. You know, it's got to have handrails and smoke detectors and, you know, proper wiring in the furnace and everything to work. Now, it doesn't have to be the Taj Mahal. It doesn't have to be perfect, um, but it all has to function and it all has to, to work properly and be safe. So doors need to open and close. The furnace needs to work. Plumbing needs to work. The roof needs to have um, basic life left to it so it's not uh, needing replaced. So what we're going to do is we're going to dive into these uh, minimum property standards. We're going to teach you how to call them out, how to identify them. Um, and then that way, when you find a minimum property standard issue, those items just need to be included in the bid. Because what the lender's looking for is after that home is complete, and the loan is closed and the renovation is done, that the home meets the lender's minimum property standards. And if this loan is sold to, let's say, FHA, then FHA has a minimum property standards requirement. So we have to meet that based on the loan. So we're going to dive into this. We're going to go through um, exteriors, and then we're going to go through interiors. We're going to point out, you know, how do you identify them, what you're looking for, and then you document them and then just make sure they're on the bid. This is pretty straightforward stuff, nothing too confusing. Um, as, as a home inspector and a HUD consultant, this is all very simple standard stuff. You know, does it work? Is it safe? Um, and does it meet these minimum property standards? Okay, what we're going to discuss now are the minimum property standards as far as conducting the initial on site inspection. What we're going to do is we're going to do a walkthrough and a walk around of the property. Um, we're going to call out and identify any items that are required to be repaired or fixed or changed in order to meet the lender's minimum property standards. Okay, so let's start with exteriors, the site requirements. And when I say site requirements, I mean the, the property itself, the drainage, the grading, the trees, things like that, sidewalks. And then the building requirements, that's the actual physical structures, the roof, the siding, the windows, and things like that. So what we're going to talk about is, you know, what to look for when you're doing the site evaluation and when you're on site uh, looking at the property. So what I like to do is always do a, uh, an exterior walk around. Okay, that's the first thing I like to do so I can get a good handle on what the condition of the property is, um, look for any hazards, look for any minimum property standards. So what we do is we provide you with a minimum property standards list. It's kind of our cheat sheet that lets you um, basically check off all the, the items to look for. So it's going gonna, it's gonna to say, did you look at the roof? Did you look at the grading? Did you look at the vegetation? You know, did you look at the handrails and the walkways? Did you look at the siding or the exterior? Did you look at the roof? All those things. So if you use your cheat sheet, um, it's going to help you just make sure you're not missing anything. And obviously after you've done this hundreds of times, it really becomes second nature. You can walk around a property pretty fast, um, identify those things, take pictures, make your list, and it'll just be second nature. So let's talk about drainage first. It's pretty obvious the the drainage needs to flow away from the house. What lenders want to see is that there's no negative drainage so that the basements aren't flooding, the crawl spaces aren't flooding, um, water's not running into the home or, or running against the home, um, which is going to cause mold or rot or, you know, damage to the, to the property over the long haul. So drainage is important. Just they want the water sloping away from the house, flowing away from the house, whether it's with the grading or the gutters, but basically getting all the water away from the house so it's not hurting anything. So here's some examples. You know, we see this a lot where the gutters um, are improper or they're dumping water too close to the foundation or they don't have backsplashes on them, um, which can negatively affect the property. Uh, if you look at and this other picture here, there's a grading issue. So if the water's coming down and going right into the house, that's not that's not good. You know, you might want a swale uh, or a ditch or a drainage tile or something like that. So this is pretty straightforward. Basically, gravity is gonna gonna take care of water. If it's running towards the house, that's no good. If it's running away from the house, 
That's what we want. So we can call that out if we have a negative uh, grade situation or a drainage situation. The next one is plants, trees, and vegetation. So basically what the minimum property standard is for, for vegetation is they just don't want trees and vines and everything touching the house and getting into the roof and filling up the gutters and you know just basically causing issues and I, I'm sure you've seen it before but uh, you know if a tree is too close to the house it could break the foundation it can push up on sidewalks um, if trees are overhanging the house or scraping the house it could ruin the roof so there's all kinds of things that vegetation um, can do to hurt the house and what FHA and most lenders requirement requirements are going to be is you know trim the stuff back make sure it's not touching the house make sure it's not going to hurt the house and it's pretty straightforward pretty simple um, nothing too crazy there just making sure that the vegetation um, is not going to cause future damage here's some examples you know you see these trees growing up everything's touching the house hurting the roof filling up the gutters so pretty straightforward Pretty simple. If there's vegetation touching the house, you'll want to mark that as, you know, remove the vegetation or at least trim it back. Uh, the next section we're going to talk about is uh, paving areas, uh, stairs, handrails, and walks. Once again, they just want everything to be safe. So no trip hazards. Um, when you're walking down stairs, if you start to fall, you got to have a handrail to grab onto. Um, once again, same thing. Always think health and safety. If it's safe and it's not causing damage then it should be should be okay for a minimum property standard so let's look at um, decks and porches next same thing it's got to have railings so people aren't going to fall they got to be properly built so they're not you know weak and rotting um, where they could collapse or have some kind of a structural failure or cause somebody some pain or damage if they they fall fall out um, fall through the railings things like that so here's some examples of some trip hazards. You know, the sidewalk's been moved up because of the tree. Those need to be taken care of. Someone could certainly trip, fall, and hurt themselves. So you'd want to mark that down. You know, repair the, the trip hazards here on the sidewalk. And as long as that's in the bid, we'll be in good shape. Here's some more examples. You know, rotten wood, rotten railings, missing deck boards. You know, someone could put their foot through there, fall, twist their ankle, and get hurt. Uh, more rotten wood, uh, spindles that are missing. You know, a child could fall through the railing if, if the spindles are missing. This is all really just common sense. So if you wouldn't want your toddler up there walking around um, or if someone could get hurt, you know, you call it out, put it on the, the list, take pictures of it, and make sure it's included in the bid.